Welcome to the Goth and the Sloth. I'm your Sloth, Matt. And I'm Luna the Goth. This is the podcast of two friends living a country apart, living our best lives, and this time actually getting into the Christmas spirit. Mm. <laughs> we decided to take the first hunk of our podcast that was short, supposed to be short and <laughs> discuss the COVID-19 pandemic, how it affects our lives, how it affects your lives, and uh, chronicle our lives during a pandemic. But it turned out to be a lot longer than just a short intro. Yeah. <laughs> Little did we know. Right. <laughs> so how have you been? I've been okay. Um, yeah, it's just fine. Just fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, I'd say fine. I, I should be feeling better because uh, I got my car back yesterday. Yay! Car back! So... That's been nice. You have your normal mode of transportation back, which yep. is good. It is good. It is all shiny and, I guess, new sort of fixed? Um, well, new bumper, uh, new paint job on one of the doors. Um, what else? is A uh, new fin on the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a, a one new wheel. <laughs> all right. Well, that's but, something. But it is as clean as it has been, say, super detailed it. So it's as clean as it's been since I've purchased it. Hey, so that's nice. that always look on the bright side of life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you have your car back. It's good to, good to have it back. It's good to be home. <laughs> so let's uh, jump into it. How is the greater Virginia area doing these days? Well, uh wildly awful um i do have a caveat for this episode today because i am going through computer uh, like storage hell um (laughs) my old notes are on a drive that is not that i don't have hooked up on a computer right now because i'm trying to get this other drive so you know what We'll be all right. So I don't know what the different the change is. Okay. Listen to last week's episode if you have a question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this week, um, we are at three hundred and two thousand nine hundred and seventy two cases. Um, our hospitalizations are at sixteen thousand eight hundred and twenty four. And our deaths are at 4,643. Um, and the we still have 12 cases of multi-system inflammatory sy- syndrome in children. Uh, so wildly bad. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I guess maybe like every once in a while I like look at these numbers and it's like an out-of-body experience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like... I'm sorry, how many people have died this year because of this? Like, how how is this not, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. Mm. It just seems like everyone is just like, this is fine. I'm like, this is very not fine. Oh, yeah. No, I see uh, at least once a week a comment. Well, it only kills 1% of people. It's like, that's a lot of people. A lot of people. (laughs) A lot of people. (laughs) Um, and then in also bad news, so I don't remember which week it was, but a few weeks ago, Matt mentioned that, uh, the prime minister of the, of UK was like, you know, basically we're going to take a break from Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like, well, the, the virus won't do anything. We'll just hang out. <laughs> No, no problem. No problem. Uh, obviously, that was always a bad idea. But mm-hmm. Christmas is officially canceled uh, in the UK because they have found a new vir- strain of the virus that is much more um, contagious. Oh, apparently. no. It's, it's spreading really rapidly. So I was reading a an article in the Bloomberg earlier and right now I'm looking at an article from CBC um, that that's mentioning just basically like 
no household mixing is going to be allowed at all wow. in London and uh, South um, South England. Probably everywhere, but just those are the areas w- that are getting re- hit really hard. Um, and they, I saw that about 60% of the new infections in the last week are of this new strain. So, um, bad. That's not good. Not good. Well, all my friends in England, uh, be safe out there. Stay inside if you can. Yes, yeah, stay inside. Um, I, there's a tweet from the WHO saying we're in, cl- we're in close contact with the UK, with UK officials on the new COVID-19 vi- virus variant. They'll continue to share info and results of their analysis and ongoing studies. We'll update member states and public as soon or as we learn more about the characteristics of this virus variant and any implications. Man, it'd be nice to be a member state. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. (laughs) Uh, Anyway. um, So, yes, it's uh, it's it's not good. Um, Obviously, they're not traveling, so please keep it there yeah (laughs) yeah i guess Um, you can't close the borders more so right so hopefully it truly will be contained but of course as we've learned in the western world we are just a leaky colander of germs yep so i guess colanders are just leaky in the first place we are a leaky er we are just the the rim of the colander, and everything else is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! Anyway, all right. Um, what about you? How's it going? Uh, so experts are saying Denver's doing better, but numbers are not saying that. Yeah. Um, so we're at three hundred six thousand five hundred ninety eight cases, which is up another twenty thousand from last week. Um. Which is less than the previous week to week, but that's not great. <laughs> mm. um, we're at seventeen thousand one hundred and thirty k uh, hospitalizations, which is up two thousand from week to week, and we have a new record of deaths three hundred four or sorry three thousand four hundred and twenty seven, which is up four hundred and fifteen week to week. Whoa. 415. Oh my god. Right? Oh, lord. I mean, That's... I hope you guys are doing better. Like So our positivity rate has gone down by uh, a significant amount. Oh, okay. So maybe it's just hasn't filtered quite to the numbers, but we're at about an 8% right. positivity rate on tests. At what percentage? I'm sorry. 8%. Oh, wow. That's much better. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that. There's a lot of that's a lot of cause for hope, um, and yeah, I think what that likely means is that your Thanksgiving numbers or your Thanksgiving spike has finished spiking. Finished spiking. <laughs> hopefully, and hopefully, um, it's, there's not a Christmas spike. I mean, they're not closing the airport, and mm-hmm. since Denver's mayor lost all credibility his hopes of saying just stay home for christmas is just lost on everybody so yeah, yeah. that's awesome um then uh experts are also saying that it's interesting that more rural areas are having big upticks right now rather than the cities hmm. which doesn't make sense sociologically speaking cuz you know everyone's closer together in the city but if you take into account exit polls and political leanings, yeah, it makes kind of sense. makes sense at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, in my opinion, it makes perfect sense because it's the holidays and the people in rural Colorado and rural most places mm-hmm. uh, don't give a fuck. Yep. To put it nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's over generalization. I'm sure there's some some good people in there too. But oh, totally. I mean, I grew yeah. up in the boon in the sticks. Like I, I truly did. But, um, yeah. Just based on polling yeah. and <laughs> stuff, we could pretty, pretty solidly say that 
the majority of the folks that live out in the sticks and not even like stick sticks like yeah like outside of city centers like yeah sparse suburbia <laughs> <laughs> that's a good term yeah. i've never heard it but i think it should be used more <laughs> <laughs> tm 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 <laughs> Uh, I will trademark the shit out of anything <laughs> so that I can get rich. No, I'm just go. kidding. <laughs> um, so it's still ha- it's still not a hundred percent, but it's looking closer to uh, everyone getting a second stimulus check. Um, as far as three hours ago when I looked, um, but again, it's gonna probably be six hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Canada uh, for you know, comparison has given anyone who lost their job due to COVID uh, 2000 a month since March. Mm-hmm. Every so. Western country, every single Western country has done way more for their citizens than the U.S. So while another stimulus check, a stimulus check seems like such a misnomer for this. Right. Like, like, uh, really what it is is like a pity check so that the republican senators in georgia can have something to say that they're doing for their people who are really suffering right before the election that's what this is yep um but like obviously i'm happy that it's something um yeah it's just having followed these arguments i'm just like so disenchanted with our government absolutely <laughs> even more somehow yeah yeah the um there's some decent tweets out of it and that's the only good thing out of this uh like one person said six hundred dollars is what rich people th- think poor people think is a lot of money <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i mean it is a lot of money like i mean it's a it, that is like a good chunk of rent some places you know but it is not enough to like live off of no especially since it's been i can't even count how many months anymore what's seven months since the last time we got money or yeah Yeah, eighteen hundred dollars for for most of the year yeah screw that yeah they make me so mad Uh, Um, so yep but i mean on uh better no question mark (laughs) the vac the pfizer vaccine that we talked about last week is officially in people's arms it is it's out there getting squirted everywhere (laughs) it's getting into people um yeah so a lot of uh folks you have probably seen by the time you're hearing this have been receiving it uh, the Moderna vaccine should be in circulation pretty freaking soon. So you'll be seeing people get it, the Moderna vaccine. So yep. keep that other strain away from us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Gandalf has got it now, uh, the vaccine. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, did he? I did. Yeah, Ian that. McCallan uh, posted a whole bunch that he got it. So oh, that's good. Gandalf will be safe. Uh. <laughs> I heard that Barack Obama got it, and I was like, at first I was like, that's weird, and then I was like, oh no, that makes a lot of sense, because yeah. there is that little piece of me that's like, if Michelle would do it, I would do it. <laughs> no, that's important. <laughs> um, I don't like to praise our current leader man, leadership at all, but our uh, vice attempted dictator uh got the vaccine as well which hopefully i don't know how much followers care about him compared to our president but at least he got it and... uh evangelicals i think probably do and okay. i think that um and, and i mean they kind of they fucking love him it's weird <laughs> uh, and also uh i saw mitch mcconnell got it as well yeah and he wrote his he his team tweeted out some like semi heartfelt, like we're fighting this for you and you should da da da. And I was like, Mitch McConnell is actual, actual Satan's balls. Yep. Like his scrotum, Satan's scrotum. Yeah. 
Have you looked at Mitch McConnell lately? Oh, yeah. Like, he's slowly losing his flesh tone and just reverting back to Satan Ball's yeah. flesh tone. Yeah. No, he's even got kind like of that, that seam that goes down between the two balls going. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I hate Mitch McConnell yeah. so much. So, but at anyway. least, again, yeah, it's it's a leadership thing. If someone, hopefully, that you trust gets it and says it's fine, hopefully people will get it. I mean, I trust right. in the scientists that say it's fine, but whatever gets people over that hump to Agreed. get it. Agreed, yeah. Uh, it's necessary to do things like this. So, yes, I support that. Yeah. I agree. So, uh, how's, uh, what's, or uh, what should I say? <laughs> what's new in Luna's world these days? <laughs> what should I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Uh, things are fine. I am like I mentioned that I'm dealing with this whole like after I got the my like storage stuff figured out for my computer, mm-hmm. I was like I figured it out. I did this thing, and then I like called my partner and was like at like mid conversation, I was like, "Fuck, I did the wrong thing." Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, like, in the process of, like, moving data from one thing to another and then returning the other thing, and ugh, it's just stupid. Um, but I did successfully figure out what I need to do, um, so th- there's light on the horizon of this dang <laughs> drive situation. Um but other than that, uh, we wrapped up like the last classes of the semester at the D- aerial dance studio, so that was really cute. Everybody did their little like, you know, little, um, performance for their singular parent that sat ten feet away in a chair with a mask for five minutes before we <laughs> made them leave. <laughs> we like filed one parent in per child, had them sit down, had them do the piece. And then was like, thank you for coming. Goodbye. Leave at one at a time. Thank you. <laughs> yep. One person. Great. Mm-hmm. And now you. One person. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. At least it was something. Yeah. But it was super cute. We turned all the like lights on for them. And yeah. Nice. It was really adorable. Um, and yeah, I'm just like kind of like ready, oddly enough. I think I'm, like, ready for the holidays. Like, yeah. kind of getting in the mood for the holidays, which is a little rare. <laughs> <laughs> and very surprising for this year. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. And I have a wacko cat yeah. who is trying to destroy worlds behind me, so you'll probably hear some strange things. <laughs> uh, but there's nothing I can do about it because she rules this household. That's true. You're just the auto feeder that lives with her. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> she wishes I was a little bit more automatic. Yeah. In my feeding. <laughs> um, she. It's so funny. Like because I don't have an auto feeder for her, she has like the, her little internal clock going. Oh yeah. And man, like the other night, my partner and I were sitting here watching a movie, and she was laying in the like crevice between us, mm-hmm. you know, cause she's always got the best spot in the house. Mm, yeah. And like, I usually feed her at eight o'clock and her like little head popped up at like straight from sleep. Like she was just snoring and then her little head popped up and then she jumped down to the ground and we were like, huh. And we looked at the clock and it was exactly eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Oh god! Quite different anyway, from my right, cat, because uh, my cat, uh, I do have an auto feeder, and it's got a noise that goes off when it goes off. And earlier this week, she was like in a dead sleep, and it went off, and then she kind of half woke up with like her, because she's laying on her face, like her whiskers were all messed up. She had like one Aww. ear down. She's like, huh? I don't care. <laughs> and then like when she finally kind of woke up, she's like, oh yeah, food. <laughs> sweet kitty so yeah uh new stuff for me is uh well obviously got my car back and so that's been great Uh, i've been taking 
inventory of what's now missing out of the car. This is the first time I can really go through it and like, what did right, I have? Yeah. Um, yeah, they didn't keep a whole lot, but that's fine. Because I don't keep a lot that I don't, I'm not willing to lose. So, but it's just about replacing things you don't think about, like uh, making sure I still have my jumper cables and my emergency stuff, and mm-hmm. had to go get a window scraper because I did get rid of, got rid of my window scraper. Did you get a cool one? No, they actually don't. I've tried to like, I looked up like Star Wars ones to see if anyone makes one. That's an open market that uh, they Somebody have not get on them. that. Yeah. I want a lightsaber ice scraper. <laughs> Make it happen. I want it to obviously be white because I am a Sokotano. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I am also very much getting into the season. I made homemade apple cider yesterday. Uh, completely from scratch. That was a lot of fun. What uh, What do you do to the apples? Uh, essentially, you make apple soup. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Uh, so it's not terribly I hard. I just assume, like in my head, I just assume like you just like take an apple in your fist and squeeze it, and <laughs> <laughs> squeeze the essence of the apple out into a delicious cider. Just like yeah, just like orange juice, but it's an apple. And you just squeeze. It. <laughs> oh no, that would be terrible. <laughs> No, you didn't. Well, that's really cool. But yeah, yeah, you put uh, you know, a bunch of cut apples and uh, I did it in the slow cooker. You put a bunch of that and then your spices uh in uh, just a whole bunch of water and let it uh, cook for a while. And then you add some sugar and then your booze. Booze. Cuz I'm not I'm not <laughs> making regular cider here. That's no fun. Nice. <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah, I've been getting into the season as well. Um, so I think it's, yeah, good time to get back to the season. Yeah, get it going. Which brings us to what we're talking about today. What are we talking about today? So as you're listening to this, you we are basically, well, I don't know when you're listening to this, let's be honest. <laughs> but <laughs> So essentially, uh, this usually comes out on Tuesdays. And this is like right at the start of Yule this year. So we thought we would do a Yule episode. So happy Yule. Um, And what we're going to do is we're going to share. It's a little bit, you know, less of a depressing episode. So (laughs) in the spirit of Yule. (laughs) Um, So we're going to share like our, some of our like favorite ways or suggested ways to enjoy the season in a weird weird year yeah (laughs) um so hopefully this will give you some ideas or you can think about your faves and share with us and we'll share with everybody or whatever um but we thought it would be a nice way to just like take a break from all the depressing stuff (laughs) (laughs) and talk about some like fun stuff and get in the spirit a little bit so uh do you want to kick us off matt sure uh, yeah, a lot of uh, what I normally do, and I can still do this year, is I, I do a lot of media, of course, because it's cold outside, and I like to be inside warm and watching things. <laughs> That's also true in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I but like continue. to be cool and indoors in the summer instead of warm and indoors in the summer. Oh, I see. Very Big different. Difference, totally yeah. different. <laughs> So some of my favorite things to watch, and you can cue in with some of yours. Um, a new big one for me is I like to watch The Krampus, um, the movie with uh, Adam Scott and a whole bunch of other people. And that's a great movie. I also love all the American Dad Christmas episodes. They... Yeah, that is definitely your thing. <laughs> Anytime I see an American Dad Christmas episode, I think of you. <laughs> they are so good. Um what else do I watch during the season? Um, and I usually get at least one viewing in of Christmas Vacation at some yeah, point. Yeah, I feel like that. Even if I don't try, it finds like me. Like it just pops up, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. I'm like, yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything that you usually watch during this time of year? Um, 
I used to. I used to be a lot more of a like Christmas movie, holiday, whatever. And I'm I'm I find myself growing away from those sorts of things. Um I definitely watch rare experts exports every year. Mm. Uh, again, I don't have to try. It just finds yeah. me. Like <laughs> it's on Shutter now and I was like, "Oh, well, I guess I'm watching this." <laughs> so, <laughs> um, who doesn't need a bunch of naked Santa in your life? Uh, not sexy kind, just in case you were wondering. Don't nope, it's not that. Um so yeah, I I haven't really. Whoa! Sorry, <laughs> Nisha just tried to kill me. <laughs> She's like, "Shut up and love me." Um, I haven't really been going in that direction this year. Okay. Uh, but I will say that, um, I as far as like entertainment media sort of stuff, I maybe this falls into this category. Um, I've been really interested in like spooky ghost christmas stories okay so like i'm actually on the hunt like i've been kind of searching around and like i wonder because i know they're out there Mm -hmm. so i wonder if anybody has some like favorite holiday ghost stories um and if you do please send them to me because that sounds awesome and i'm just kind of like bumping around in the dark on this one because that certainly wasn't something that i did as a kid but i think it's kind of cool like i i do a lot of like lighting a lot of candles for the holidays or like you turn out all the lights and you just have all the leds on your tree or whatever Mm -hmm. it'd be nice to be like just like settle in and you know drink apple cider and read a scary ghost story or silly ghost story or whatever very cool yeah Totally. So uh, one thing I saw on a website of things you can do this year um, that I thought was kind of cool, and my family ended up, we're actually doing it anyways, is um, trying stuff or just finding out other cultures' Christmas traditions and kind of learning oh. them. Cause this is a good year to kind of, you know, expand your horizons, you know. You know, find out what the Yule Cat is all about. Um, and the 13 Yule men of Iceland. Um, we're doing a whole Polish Christmas thing, uh, this year. Aw. So that'll be awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love that idea. I hadn't thought of that. Um, yeah, I don't need, I, I guess I would just start wherever. Like, I know, like a couple things come from different cultures, like the cookies Mm -hmm. for Santa and stuff like that. But like, um, yeah, that's a really cool one. I like that. Yeah. Uh, there's a few things we kind of miss out on from other countries that I've been finding doing some of the research on this. So even though historically Japan doesn't really celebrate Christmas, uh, KFC has like a Christmas box they do every year, but only in Japan with like a, (laughs) like a whole meal thing. Um, and also KFC in England is doing a special Christmas sandwich, um, just in England. Cause we get, apparently we get screwed with KFC in our, in the U S but apparently <laughs> what is that about? I wonder if they do it in Trinidad. I'll have to find out. That's really cool. I wonder what it is. Do you know what the, what the sandwich uh, the is? The sandwich in the UK is a, um, uh, a, like what do I want to call it? It's a chicken sandwich that you pour gravy on top of it. Oh. So it's like a sweet, okay. oh, but it's got like bacon and it's a, yeah, it looks really freaking good. And I was like, oh, I want to try that. And I looked, I was like, oh, we don't, we, we don't, don't get, get that. The... Huh. Interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe we need to like yell at Wawa and be like, yo, you do every other type of food. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a Christmas sandwich. But I think what they do, they end up doing is just doing the Thanksgiving through the end of the year so you could get the gobbler like yeah. all year round or whatever. But, huh, that's cool. I really like this idea of like other cultures. I like that's a nice like little rabbit hole to go down. And it's mm. not a shallow one either. Oh, you yeah. just kind of keep going and going. And yeah, it's all, you know, nothing's horrifying or depressing. It's all really heartwarming uh, or funny at at the least, you know, some some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. 
so cool. What do you what do you got for us? You got any Yeah. Um so I was gonna share a couple of things that um well two things. Basic basically like Yule and the holidays for me is food. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> As for most people. <laughs> so I just am going to encourage people to make or order or whatever your very, 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 very favorite mm-hmm. things. Because if not now, when? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I made glue vine today and it was so good. So if you don't know what glue vine is, it is basically malt, German mold cider, uh, sorry, mold wine um, that is served at Christmas time and at like German Christkindl markets and p- families make it at home and stuff like that. It's delicious and super easy to make. So all you need is, um, so for like a single bottle of wine, like a 750 milliliter bottle of wine, you need like a smooth red blend, but it could be a cab or something as long as it's not like super, uh, distinctive in some weird yeah. way. <laughs> Just know that that's going to come through in your glue vine. Um, and then you have, uh, you start with orange juice. I prefer fresh squeezed. So I would do about, it comes to about like, and I'm not one of those, like it must be this much liquid <laughs> or it will die. Like it's glue vine. You're going to be yeah. fine. So I would do about three oranges, like juice about three oranges, uh, fresh squeezed, or you can just go get some orange juice. I would suggest getting the kind that's not from concentrate, <laughs> um, just because that's weird. Yeah. I don't know what that would taste like. Um, and you can do about like three quarters of, cu- of a cup of that, and then still juice one orange. Then uh, grab one of the peels, and what I do is I cut the like because you have to cut the orange in half to juice Mm -hmm. it i cut the tip of the orange off too so you just have a ring of peel and then i stick all the cloves in that so i i stuck about 13 cloves i think you're supposed to do 10 but i i like it (laughs) (laughs) so stick all the cloves into the orange peel um put a cinnamon stick all in a saucepan and then um and then you bring it to a boil and then simmer it for about half an hour. And you'll notice that it gets really like syrupy, kind of like when you're making teriyaki sure. sauce. Um, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I forgot the sugar. So you have <laughs> to do a three quarter cup of sugar, white sugar. Um, and then, yeah, bring it to a boil, simmer it for about half an hour. It smells so good while you're doing you're right. it. <laughs> And then uh, basically add the wine, or I took all of that and put it in a crock pot and added the wine there, and you just keep it on low. Don't let it come to a boil. Let it get all steamy. Ladle it into some mugs, and voila, delicious. Very nice. Um, so I drank a fair amount of that earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah, I highly recommend it. It's just there's something about drinking glue vine hot in a cu- in a mug sitting outside and it's cold and you're just like, ah, yes, all is right with the world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. The world is shit. But <laughs> but it gives you that, that, that one freedom moment. for that moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, so that's uh, or do you got more? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, well, in that case, I can give my cider recipe unless you got another recipe. Um, no, not not necessarily as detailed. So go ahead. All right. Well, so again, this is the first time I made it, so there's a lot of experimenting still to be done. Um, but this is in a slow cooker, uh, and what I did is you take eight apples uh, quartered, uh, take out you know the cores and all that fun stuff. I did. What kind um, of apple? So you want to generally do red apples. I did. Four Red Delicious and four Gala. Um, okay. You can kind of mix and match, and that's where I'm going to do some more experimenting. Uh, put that in the slow cooker. Get an orange and cut it into very thick slices, about like half-inch slices. Uh, put that over the apples. 
Then you want a tablespoon of whole cloves, not ground, and a teaspoon of whole allspice. Again, not ground because that creates like sediment at the bottom and you don't want that. Uh, and then you put cover that with 10 cups of water and you put that on high on your slow cooker for three hours. And like nice. like your wine, it makes your house smell amazing while it's cooking. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, like I, as I was making it, I was like, this is the right, this is the right. Like, I just felt like I was like in this long, I'm actually still wearing it, like this long black dress with a long, um, like knitted thing. I don't know what you call yeah. these. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like wear over, it's kind of like a poncho, but not, it's made of yarn. <laughs> so it was like really warm and I like had my like little spooky hat on and I had a little like... <laughs> spoon and i was like (laughs) Like, felt like a little yule witch making my glue vine it was so good that sounds awesome i will try that a couple more steps though just oh just kidding almost there so after the three hours uh go and drop it down to low and you're gonna mash up everything uh with a masher uh it doesn't need to be super fine but you want to get you know all the orange Orange and apple uh, kind of all meshed up. And then you're going to add, I ended up adding three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And then you let that go on low for an hour to three hours, um, depending. This is at the point where you kind of start getting ready. And then uh, then you filter it, and that's when you add your bu- your booze. You can either add nice. whiskey or we added spiced rum. Very nice. Yeah, I actually, um, I prefer to add my booze to cider outside of the pot. Mm-hmm. Like I keep the cider uh, unboozed, but then I just mix it. So my favorite way to do that is um, I take the cider, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I do like a healthy pour of bourbon. And then I do a little splish splash of butterscotch schnapps and then i squeeze like i usually actually pre-squeeze the lemon so i just have fresh squeezed lemon juice and like do a little bit of lemon juice to loosen it up and uh yeah that's it nice it's really good yeah that sounds awesome and um what was i gonna say do you did you say you put a cinnamon stick in there? Oh yeah, totally forgot that. Uh, so in the initial <laughs> in the initial cook, uh, you want to put four whole cinnamon sticks into the. Uh... Okay, yeah. For glue vine, you only need one cinnamon stick for a one bottle of wine. But um, yeah, I was thinking that your apple cider would need more because that cinnamon apple combo is oh, like yeah, you need... made in oh, heaven. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and there's some <laughs> uh, recipes I saw called for like whole anise seed. I'm not big on the black licorice kind of flavor but i might try it at some point um and yeah it's super customizable like if you want to try different apples i personally don't think a granny smith would work i think it'd be way too sour oh my god <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. that's cider if you don't like your, right? your neighbors or whatever <laughs> like the people drinking it like <laughs> Ooh, uh, but yeah, yeah then it uh, yeah, keep it on low all night and keep you know grabbing a few cupfuls and being nice and warm. It's great. Yeah, it really is. There's something about just warming yourself up from the inside in the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, like and because it's Yule, also season's greetings. So you know, it's actually officially winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you're yes, listening. Yes, not, not right, right now. now. We're still in fall over here. Um, <laughs> the other thing I would, I, uh, like to do, and of course everybody has their favorite baked goods mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But the one thing I like never make for myself, and it's not really like Yule or Christmas or holiday themed, but I never make my favorite cookie, which is an oatmeal cookie without anything in it. <laughs> <laughs> And I do like oatmeal, uh, oatmeal chocolate chip as well. Mm. Like everybody wants to stick raisins in there, and I was like, I don't know why the ghosts of dead grapes right? need to be infecting my cookie. But <laughs> I like. So what I'm planning on doing this week, I'm going to make a batch 
of um, oatmeal cookies and then a batch of oatmeal chocolate chip cookies and I am super excited about it. It's a uh, it's like a normal recipe. The only difference is that I use applesauce instead of butter. Nice. And it's amazing. Well, I use like half. I use like a little bit of butter and then applesauce to make up the rest of it. Okay. So good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't get why. Yeah, you got to jam a bunch of stuff into oatmeal cookies. I like oat, plain oatmeal cookies. Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? And like, I like my oatmeal cookies to be like soft. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be crunching on the hard oatmeal. Like, so I just have to make it myself. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> but yeah, my so my general like Yule, holiday, Christmas. Um, traditions or ideas for this year because I'm not going anywhere my you know my parents are staying put my sisters are all staying put where they are it's just gonna be me and my partner and like we gotta make the most mm -hmm. of it like you know otherwise the day will pass and we'll just be more depressed in January so might as well like swing into it like lean into yeah. it as hard as I can. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's like when I uh, overcompensated for celebrating Friday the Thirteenth, the last one we passed. <laughs> like I usually don't go that a lot, but I was like, you know what? Screw it. It's it's been a year. I'm gonna enjoy it's been Friday a year, the Thirteenth. Friday Thirteenth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just like no shame. Do whatever you gotta do. Like this is the year to lean into it. Pick something you want to do and go for it. If it doesn't work out, if the recipe you do doesn't work, toss yeah. it. Try again. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Eat it in your underwear. 3 a.m., 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Take weird 5 a.m. selfies with your cookies or something. I no, the All bets are off. Like, Please get weird this right? holiday because you are not going to be the only one. I'm already losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Create some new traditions. Do some, Yeah, do something weird and out there. Yep. Just, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just like, I think I've like hit the point of, oh my God, it's the holidays. And oh my God, do I not give a fuck about what anybody thinks right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but those are my recommendations did you have anything else? Uh, well while we're sort of on food uh one tradition i started uh by kind of accident last uh two years ago i think now uh i started just trying to make hot chocolate from scratch uh because i grew uh, up yeah. basically my mom would boil water and then put the chocolate powder in that and that was my hot chocolate hey don't knock on that Swiss oh, Miss yeah. shit, yo. Like, Swiss Miss and me, we good. Oh, but you haven't <laughs> tried my ultra delicate. I don't have the whole recipe. I'll okay, have to find yeah, but it. that's because I don't actually like chocolate. That's so I true. like Swiss Miss. Is like, go. this is the ghost of chocolate and mostly just warm milk. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the other the part. My mom used to just make it with hot water. Not oh, warm milk. yeah, yeah, we made it with hot milk. <laughs> so, yeah, now I do it with, like, a, a mix of um, heavy cream and whole milk as the base. So it's super, like, it'll kill you if you have, um, if you're lactose, lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant, yeah. You will, I, you'll just be dead, like. <laughs> yeah, that sounds But, terrible. yeah, it's got. Uh, but it sounds amazing. Yeah, different types of chocolate. Last year I tried doing, like, a Mexican spicy hot chocolate. Do you like No, those? I hated it, actually. I don't either. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that people like it, but it is not my thing. Yeah, that, well, what you said, like, if your recipe doesn't work out, throw it out. That was me last year. I was like, I <laughs> hate this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is terrible. <laughs> but I'm the only one yeah, drinking it, like, so in the sink. <laughs> yeah, and, I like, one of the things I was thinking about, a lot of people, like, think of Starbucks drinks mm -hmm. as your as their like holiday thing. Yeah. And granted a lot of Starbucks drive throughs are still open. You can go get it if you want. But if you wanna go out on a limb and just see if you want to make it, make your own like peppermint mocha or pe peppermint hot chocolate if you don't have espresso at home. Absolutely. Like you can you can get a little inventive and then you can kinda play with, oh well I like like this much caramel and this much toffee nut or whatever um and then you can make your own signature drink. absolutely there's a youtube channel called binging with babish 
um, and he cracked the code on how to make a frappuccino uh, because there's like a little added t- to it. It's not just coffee and ice that gives it that like texture. Oh my god, yeah, it's not. It's a hundred percent sugar and like a hint of coffee. Right, <laughs> but there's also this like additive which you can actually get pretty easily and kind of make that gives it also that texture. Um, and Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you can do that and that's all you need is that little extra bit and then make your own, figure out a Frappuccino, like add your own, whatever, get weird with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. All my, all my like barista knowledge, I just need to like file away so that I can create my own drink. I just don't like Frappuccino. Like my thing with Frappuccinos is that I just want ice cream. Like frappuccinos are too watery because it's it's ice. Yeah. It's blended with. I'm like, no, just give me the fucking pint of ice cream, <laughs> and if I want it to be a shake, I'll wait a minute and let it melt and stick a straw in it. <laughs> I don't want a fra- frappuccino, but I mad respect for people that like frappuccinos because I've made a lot in my day. But you can also get weird with coffee mixes too. Get weird oh, with yeah. whatever. Man. Oh yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I I think there's a lot out there. Oh, make your own London Fog. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about that the other day because I have a ton of Earl Grey. I was like, maybe I'll just start making my own London Fogs here. That could be delicious. (laughs) That's been a lot of my year, at least this last kind of getting into the holidays and food. It's like, I want to try cooking a thing I haven't cooked or something I've always bought in like a pre-made version of just to see if I can do it. And typically you can. Yeah. You'll, find, you'll find a way to make it something you like, even if it's slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. That's so go stuff. out there, get weird, make what you want. Hopefully find some way to get in the spirit. It's been a crazy year, so whatever works for you, let it ride. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yell at KFC for not giving us their chicken, their holiday chicken sandwich. <laughs> yes. All singular, single digit people that listen to this podcast go throw yourselves at kfc windows <laughs> and say uh, it's called i want my holiday sandwich uh, i really quickly looked it back up just so i can get 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 everyone angry it's called the great oh what it is yeah it's called a gravy oh, burger nice. it's a uh, chicken sandwich with hash browns on top and uh you oh. get gravy separate with it that you pour all over the top of it Sounds That's so confusing amazing. to me because if I pour gravy all over my sandwich, how do I pick it up? It's going to be a sloppy sandwich. That bothers me. I don't want that. Come on, you you lived in Colorado. You've had you've had smothered burgers. No, I haven't. You haven't I had a have smothered burger. Smothered. I've had smothered burritos which you eat with a knife and fork. Oh, you got to have a smothered, a smothered burger, burger which you then gents you eat with a, a knife and fork. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, if I eat it with a knife and fork, that's different. But fast food and then having to eat my sandwich with a knife and fork is very confusing. Well, the person I saw <laughs> online trying it out uh, picked it up. Like, he didn't put enough to where it was, like, soaked through. But uh, it had, like, a gravy topping on it. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. I would definitely try it. Oh, yeah. So anyways, let's move on to our distractions. What are we distracting ourselves with uh, besides holiday cheer? Um, so I've been distracting myself by restarting The Expanse. Okay. Uh, because I started it a long time ago, and I don't know when I gave up. Um, and it wasn't that I gave up because I didn't like it. I think I was just busy at the time and forgot mm. about it or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I restarted it and I'm like, well, I love this. So hopefully I stick with it. This time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really digging the sci-fi genre right now for some reason. Uh, I really kind of want to go back and start BSG over again, which is probably like the 10th time I'm watching it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm still watching the wire and the crown. Uh, I watched, um, anything for Jackson on shutter, okay. which was, interesting it i i appreciated it for being like a 2020 horror movie i was like all right that's not bad like it's really interesting so um that was a fun watch 
Shutter has got a whole lot of holiday trash on it right now, oh, yeah. so I'll be burning through that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's mostly been my distractions um, when I'm not trying to scream at external hard drives. There you go. <laughs> What about you? What are you distracting yourself with? Well, the biggest one recently, and of course it's dangerous for me, is um, my friend Luna got me a Lego Packers helmet set. So. No, I didn't. Did I say Luna? Yeah, you did. <laughs> wow. I must be really tired. Sorry. <laughs> you my... doing all right, friend? Uh, I'm, I'm all here. <laughs> I haven't even <laughs> drinking today at all either. My f- my good friend Fiona <laughs> got me a Legos Packers helmet set. That is awesome. So, <laughs> I was like, this sounds so cool, but I did not I get that get for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, I got my two friends that I know confused now. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We look exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same, too, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's been, like, dangerous because I can never, like, let a Lego set just sit. i got to be like, I could be working on that right now. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I actually started your uh, Paris one because I was like, now's the time. Now's when I'm feeling in a good mood. I'm going to make this work. Nice. And I started it, and it's kind of exciting. Like, it's a little addictive. I was yeah. like, I'm just going to do, like, a little bit. And now I'm like, I can't stop thinking about this. Yeah, it is. But it's... I'm trying to hold off because I want to do it. I'm so weird that, like, I have serious issues, which is why I have therapists. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, anytime I have something that I, I am going to be able to enjoy, I, like, have to wait until there's, a, like, a, a, a specific time to enjoy it. Otherwise, I feel like the joy from it will get siphoned off into other things and I won't end up remembering the happiness that I did. So it's like I started it, like I brought it down and put it on the center table and I like opened things up and I was like, okay, I'm, I, like I had that feeling of like, oh, I'm excited. And then I was like, well, I can't start it until Monday because Monday's the first day of the break. And then I'll have a two week break to do it. And if I do it before then, then I won't have anything to do with it. That, that's stupid. Of course, I, I could just do it now. Anyway, sorry, I got a little tangent about Legos because I've been thinking about like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just sit down and do it. And I'm like, no, I want it to be for a, ho- it's a holiday Lego event. <laughs> problems anyway that's all right um outside of that i've also been on a huge wonder woman kick uh, because the new wonder woman movie's coming out so i watched both the animated movies uh one of them i didn't realize rosario dawson is the voice of wonder woman oh wow so that was cool. fun um and then uh, me and my friends last night watched uh, a canceled pilot of a wonder woman show from 2011 that um had uh, Adrian Padalinki as Wonder Woman. Uh, do do huh. you watch the Orville? Uh, yes. Uh huh. The the main chick, uh, his oh, ex wife. Really? Yeah, she was Wonder Woman. Weird. And it's got uh, weirdly enough, and I didn't realize because I've seen it before, but you know, we did it for an episode of my YouTube channel that you've been on, uh, Readers of the Lost Comic Movie. Um, but it's got Pedro Pascal in it from 2011. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> weird like oh it's the mandalorian <laughs> but different <laughs> right he doesn't have a mustache he's clean <laughs> oh weird huh and yeah so that was fun and then yeah i'm planning on watching uh the first wonder woman movie the gail Gadot one uh next week and then watching okay. 1984 uh sometime over the holiday break yeah, yeah, I'll watch it too. Oddly enough, yeah, I'll... I like never. I haven't been like consuming movies when they come out because you know theaters or yeah. whatever. But I think I will with that one. Yeah, and no, I've been about the same. Like it took me a long time to watch Borat too. Because um, mm-hmm. I'm just like I don't know. I you have to bring myself to like watch a movie at home, like a new movie. Mm-hmm. Different experience. We'll have to get used to it. Hopefully not. <laughs> at least, at least for a little bit. Get used to it for a little bit, and then okay, a little bit, fine. 
<laughs> but then hopefully, knock on wood, uh, we can go movie for our birthdays next yes. year. Yes. Take your vaccinations. Don't breathe on people. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what I've been distracting myself with. So let's move to, I think, everyone's favorite part of the podcast, Only in a Pandemic. And major civil unrest. Stories that can only happen in a pandemic or major civil unrest. Do you have anything? Yeah, I didn't, but I I thought of something recently, um, and it's it's real vanilla. Um, (laughs) So (laughs) I was thinking, like... I, as a freelancer, I don't have like holiday party, work holiday parties, office holiday parties to go to mm-hmm. um, anymore because I'm a freelancer, you know, I, I can just be like, I'm not an employee, bye. <laughs> like, <laughs> but um, one of my clients like had a holiday Zoom party um, this past, a couple days ago. And really wanted me to be there. So I was like, sure. I mean, clock the time. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I went and I was thinking like, like, okay, it's a holiday party. I should wear my like cute little weird Santa hat thing. Sure. And, um, and I just forgot like with virtual parties or zoom meetings or whatever you don't have that moment where you walk in the room Mm -hmm. and so like different people see you at different times and you go oh hey oh hey like yeah like whatever yeah and you just kind of like boom show up and everyone sees you at the same time (laughs) (laughs) so i showed up with the hat and i like everybody was like oh what i was like it's a freaking hat (laughs) (laughs) why is everyone freaking out right now I like I almost second guess myself like did I forget to put a shirt on like what's <laughs> going on but it was just the hat they were really uh impressed with my decision to put on an article of clothing that matches the theme of the party we were having um you know people are starved for something <laughs> I guess wow wow or maybe they really are impressed you put on clothes. I, I mean, sometimes I'm impressed that you put on, you bother to put on yeah, any clothes. Yeah, you know. I mean, they don't know me well enough to be to like congratulate me when I'm wearing like a nice shirt. That's <laughs> not just a black sweater. <laughs> but yeah, it was. I don't know. I thought that was a strange thing that I've never had to deal with before. <laughs> How about you? What's your only in a pandemic story? Only in a pandemic does getting Netflix through the mail get somehow even more sad. Uh oh. <laughs> um, so I'm still one of the few people that get Netflix through the mail. One, um, the one person. The, the I'm the one person. person yep. Um, <laughs> and I, it's usually a pretty decent turnaround. I get about one a week that I can watch and get through. But since, um, you know, it's the holiday season. Uh, with COVID and also uh, a lot of um, postal workers are either out of work or having issues because of COVID. Uh, you know, all the mails slowed down. I'm sure as everyone's noticed or heard about. Um, and I didn't get my uh, I am number four on <laughs> on Blu-ray <laughs> shipped to me. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever will you do? I know. Do, I'm like, oh, I'm, I guess I could just, you know, rent it for a dollar on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, no. But I just thought it was funny. It's like the one thing that's it's just a constant. Like, I always have one and I just watch it over the weekend. And I was like, oh, it's not coming in. And then I go to their website because sometimes they'll get lost in the mail. And you say it didn't come in, but I went to their website like, make sure you give it extra time because of uh, the holiday season and COVID. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, I mean, I'm happy that they still have that service for you. Yep. Um, and only me. The And only you. <laughs> You're the only person <laughs> that does that. I'm sorry that it, it's been slowed down in the mail, but I hope it they catch back up for you yeah i mean that's super first world problems right there <laughs> like that is, 
I just can't get it past Netflix mailing things still. They, I mean, if you look at my list, like uh, I still have the queue, but they'll tell you which ones you can stream. Mm-hmm. Less than one percent of the movies on my list you can stream. So I mean, I get that, but it's like you can rent those movies on demand if you want to see it instead of paying them monthly. I don't think it's that much more monthly. I'd have to double check to see. I mean, I don't care. Like, you do what you do. What makes you happy? I'm sure that <laughs> it's a good service for people that don't have good internet connection that can't. Yeah. You know, stream movies very well. So, good for them and you, <laughs> all five of you. <laughs> all five of us. But yeah, no, that's actually a good point, though. For reals, I should actually see what the difference is if I were to rent one a week from Amazon compared to what I'm paying monthly see who wins yeah i mean it just depends on what you want to watch like i i very rarely rent movies like maybe like in a good season once a week but usually not that like maybe a couple a month i'll rent a movie otherwise everything else is streaming and there's plenty of movies to see with the services i have so i just Uh, i don't seem to run out of movies to watch i rent at least once a week but no, again, it depends what you're looking for and what in services you have. In addition to Netflix? Yeah, in addition to Netflix, I also rent. Because uh, I've been getting through all the DC movies, and they're not free to stream anywhere yet. So, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I think they'll eventually all make it to HBO Max, so I might I have to say, get that. I was going to say, I'm surprised they're not available on HBO Max now. The live-action ones are. I don't know if the animated ones have made it there yet. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. But, lower on the totem pole yeah no one cares about them except me and other huge comic nerds no, one, one person <laughs> and four other people four different people four different people, people. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, well, hey you have your thing and you figured out a system that works for you so you do your thing you do you live it up so let's uh, wrap this guy up with our Hermit's level where we've been at. So on the Leonardo DiCaprio scale, a 10 being the Revenant where you're out in the woods completely by yourself screaming at bears, or a 1 as your uh, Romeo plus Juliet and you're on the Montague party all partying it up and probably doing cocaine. Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> um, I... I'm an eight, I think, this week, oh. because like I mentioned, uh, the students had one singular observer come to their class. So I saw humans that weren't my students <laughs> um, and had to say hello to them and such. Um, and then I did like an outdoor hang with the other aerial teachers drinking glue vine today. Um, and so that was socialization. So, yeah, I like saw people outside of just being paid to see people there you go (laughs) (laughs) so yeah i it's it's not much but it's a little something that's enough yeah i'm good to just stay inside now thank you (laughs) (laughs) what about you i'd say probably about an eight uh because i had to go see people when i got my car and dropped off the rental Mm. car um you know try to stay very far apart from everyone and be outdoors um and then my band had our christmas party holiday party anniversary party what do you want to call it because one uh, one year from just a few days from now will be one year since we played our first show so that's cute (laughs) so we all got (laughs) trashed we also uh, did a stream on twitch where we did a watch along and we watched Alone for Christmas from Asylum Films. Hmm. Um, think about Home Alone, but it's dogs. Oh, my. And the exact <laughs> quality of that. <laughs> oh. And we watched okay. uh, Babes in Toyland from 1986. Holy shit. With, that movie is so old. <laughs> it is. It's got baby Keanu in it, and he's adorable and little. Oh. Oh my god <laughs> and drew barrymore like hot off et i think or maybe Firestarter. Whoa. yeah man i forgot how old that movie is that's funny and it's cool that's so cute so yeah Yay. we did that watch along and it was a lot of fun and we enjoyed each other's companies that's the way it should be 
So uh, let's uh, wrap this guy up. Where can people see you if they want to wish you happy Yule? Uh, you can find me at L-U-N-A underscore M-I-N-U-I-T on Instagram and Twitter. I especially would love it if you have any cool like holiday Christmassy ghost stories um, because I definitely want to like start collecting those for future years. Um, so yeah, and then also you can hit us up at Goth and Sloth on Instagram and Twitter. And you can email us at gothandsloth at gmail.com. And what about you, Matt? Where can everyone find you and all your things? Uh, I am on the Twitters at wizard underscore Matt. My Instagram is wizard cosplay. My YouTube channel is Matt the Feral Wizard, where I just came out with a video of all the different Wonder Women we've had over many years. Um, my band is Leonardo Leonardo Band on SoundCloud and Facebook. Uh, and my my personal music stuff is Matthew James Music 2020, and I might actually upload some stuff tonight. So look out is it a holiday that. song? It is not a holiday song. Oh, okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So yeah, I think that'll do it. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. And please do not forget to wash your hands and wear a Christmas themed mask. Or holiday themed. Or holiday mask. themed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wear whatever mask you want. Just wear a mask. <laughs> Bye.